Nikki, you're tearing me apart! Worst movie. But what's not terrible is the martinis we're about to make. No. Those are delicious. What's up, guys? Welcome back for another episode of How to Drink. I'm here with Nikki Sanseri, expert LA mixologist, and she's gonna teach us how to build your home bar and what equipment you're gonna need for it. Yeah, so I've been getting a lot of requests from you guys to give you a basic equipment list, and so this is pretty much it. It shouldn't cost you actually more than about $30 to $40 for all of these things. They pay me a lot of money to do, to tell people this stuff, by the way, and I'm just giving it to you for free. Welcome so, to YouTube. I know, it's Sit through maybe five seconds of an ad, <laughs> hit skip ad, free information. Free information. You're welcome. <laughs> First of all, you're gonna need a jigger. Um, I prefer this one. It's called a graduated or beehive jigger. A lot of people have been having trouble finding them, actually, so mm. you can get them online. Cocktail Kingdom has them. Yeah. It's the best website. It's like a mixologist porn. <laughs> then you're gonna need just a regular old pint glass. Um, I think you can get this pretty much anywhere. Yeah, you can get them at Target, even. Then I have a shaker tin. So I like using the two-part ones. This is a ball raft shaker tin. What's cool about them is since they're tapered, they vacuum seal. So, and you barely have to push it. So, you do that and then vacuum seal. It's wallet. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that neat? So your drink doesn't go everywhere. You don't have to smash up your tin and like really bang it in there. We've all seen bartenders do that. Then we have two kinds of strainers here. So I have a julep strainer. That's this little guy. This is gonna be for your stirred drinks or if you're rinsing off tiny vegetables. And then we have our Hawthorne strainer. I like the ones with the four prongs. You can get them with just two, but I like the four. They balance better on the top of your, uh, of your tin. And don't use that on this. It'll just bounce out. It's not the right size. That's why you use that one. And then we just have a, um, a vegetable peeler right here. For you probably have one of these already. Yeah. It doesn't need to be exactly this one. You can use the one that goes aside, whatever. Whatever you like. And then I have two different kinds of spoons here. So you have a weighted spoon right here, and then you have this spoon right here with the, with the disc at the bottom. Um, that's for your sugar cubes. And also this is great for cracking ice because it's one solid piece of metal right here. If you try to do it with one of these spoons, you see it's soldered and so the spoon will actually break off. And then of course we have our muddler. This is your favorite thing, T. You oh, actually yeah. bought one for your house. We all know this, <laughs> our old friend. So, it's got a nice weight to it. This is the badass muddler from Cocktail Kingdom that weighs a ton and helps you a lot with all of your your muddling needs. Yeah. So now that we've learned about all the equipment we need for our home bar, let's take on a classic cocktail. Today, Nikki's gonna teach us how to make a martini, which is going to be the drink we drink on the Movie Buzz episode for The Room. It's a movie you guys have requested a ton. We're finally doing it, and we're gonna need a strong drink because that movie is terrible. They requested it? Yeah, our viewers don't, I don't think they like us. <laughs> You guys hate us. Through the magic of editing, we now have all of our martini gear. So what do we have here? I have dry vermouth, a nice London dry gin. I love beef eater, actually. I know it's I a love cheaper beef. one. Well, I love beef, too. A martini and a steak, don't mind if I do. <laughs> that sounds lovely. And then I have some orange bitters and a lemon. Let's talk about a martini before you guys get upset about all of these ingredients, OK? So a martini is not what you decide to put in a martini glass, and that automatically makes it a martini. A martini is actually a drink. It's a real thing. It's like an actual real life drink. Um, and it actually didn't include vodka, by the way, guys. I know. <laughs> Rain the hate right now. <laughs> if you're getting a vodka martini, that's a vodka martini. It's not a martini. Exactly. See, you're so smart, T. Mm, sometimes. This is why we have I you. have my days. <laughs> a martini originally was a gin, sweet vermouth, and bitters. Hmm, sweet vermouth. Yes. Interesting. So when you called for a dry martini, you actually were calling for dry vermouth in it. Oh. It doesn't actually mean no leave vermouth. out the vermouth. Yeah. So, uh, that's what it means today. Yeah. Now, today when you say dry, a bartender will usually know it. It just means to leave out the, the dry vermouth and give you a big shot of something. Yeah, it just means chilled 
whatever you asked for. Yeah. And then the proportions that we came to, uh, the two to one proportion came about in the 1950s. So you have two parts of your spirit to one part of your vermouth. Um, and that's actually a Manhattan ratio as well. Huh. So they all tie in together, guys. And what happened during the 1950s is they started bringing vodka to the States. So Smirnoff was one of the first ones and they started doing an ad that was the spirit that leaves you breathless, meaning you don't smell vodka on people. And when you go out to a four martini lunch in the 1950s, you didn't want to go back to the office smelling like booze. And then they just started leaving out the vermouth entirely. And then you ended up with a martini that we think of today, which is just a big glass of bruised vodka. Bruised means has the ice chips on top, guys. Yeah. This is how I do it today. It's a little bit of the past and a little bit of the present. I try to tie everything in together. So I do use dry vermouth in my martinis and my bars. I like using orange bitters in them. A few dashes is actually really lovely. And then a lemon peel is really nice at the end. Um, dirty martinis are great. I totally get them. I love them, but I thought I'd give you a little different version to make. So let's get started. We're gonna do um, just like a few dashes in the bottom of your glass. A little shake, shake, shake. A little shake, shake, you know, the bottom. And then, uh, oh, by the way, when you build a cocktail, a little tip for you guys, start with the least expensive ingredients. So if you mess it up, you're not wasting the most expensive thing. Or you can just do what I do, and if you fuck it up, just drink it anyway. I and mean, it, pretty soon you won't care that you fucked it up. That's a pretty solid plan, actually, T. Yeah. You're so logical. So I'm logical. resourceful. We're gonna put in an ounce of our dry vermouth, two ounces of our gin, and then let's grab some ice and stir it up. Stick your spoon in the side here, and you're just gonna move it around. You actually don't really want to move your elbow or your shoulders or anything other than your hand and your wrist. Do you wanna try it, T? Much like a game of flip cup, it's all in the wrist. Yeah, you wanna try to, it, it takes some practice. Oh gosh. It's, it looks easier than it actually is. This you're doing is, good. This is my cardio for today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why does this look so much easier when you do it? I okay, know. the ice is melting and it's getting a little easier. Yeah, yeah. see? There you go, I'll hold it there for you. That'll help. <laughs> oh God, no! Ha ha ha. No one saw that. <laughs> Oh, it's See, getting sir? frosty. We're See? getting our dilute. I think we might be there. All right. So what you take our julep strainer, you're gonna hold it right at this little point right here. And nice and silky, gorgeous, gorgeous. See, you diluted it perfect enough. I helped. And we're gonna do your little lemon peel. Don't forget the little rim job for that glass. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta rim it. Also, when you hand it to your guest, make sure that your peel is away from their face so they can actually take a sip out of it. There you go, T. All right, T, thank you, I got you it. You made a martini. Well, you get I, to see how it is. I helped. <laughs> but this is the part that I like best. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi, drinky. See how you like that version. Yeah, it's really nice That's like so that. Good. I just want like some oysters now, a couple martinis. A steak. That would be a fantastic afternoon. We're not vegetarians, guys. Oh, hell no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a bacon and eggs and steak uh -huh. for breakfast kind of girl. See, it is so lovely like that. That's a good martini. Don't leave the vermouth out, guys. Vermouth is beautiful. Yeah. Except the vermouth. <laughs> and remember, stir, stir your martinis, please. Yes. The idea with these drinks is they're supposed to be nice and silky. Right. So that's the texture. All right, guys, there you have the classic martini. Make sure you head on over to Cinefix to check out the episode of Movie Buzz where we drink martinis and play a drinking game. It's not a good idea, but you need something strong if you're watching The Room, trust mm -hmm. me. That's it for us today. Make sure you guys subscribe to Taste It so you never miss an episode of How to Drink where we teach you guys how to make all sorts of classic cocktails mm -hmm. like these mm -hmm. and some not so classic cocktails like these. Sure. <laughs>